everyone today we will be discussing hardy weinberg equation now before starting that let me mention one thing uh, do not forget to check the subs description box because if i made any mistake in the video i always write it in the description box so do not forget to check description box in all the videos so let's start see what is hardy weinberg e equation it is p square plus 2pq plus q square is equal to 1 and this equation has given panic attacks to a lot of students okay but uh, hopefully we will make it easier so see first let's try to okay all the information is given is given in first aid and other books like uh, there should be not be any mutation there should not be any migration and all those things but we will focus mainly on how to solve the questions uh, using this equation okay so you can read it from other books now let's try to understand how this formula is derived okay there are two ways to understand see always remember that p plus q is equal to 1 okay from this we can say p plus q the whole square is equal to 1 square okay so, and p plus q the whole square is p square plus 2 p q plus q square okay is equal to 1 so this is how this formula is derived another way to understand is that c by using a 2 by 2 table Oh, sorry. By using a 2 by 2 table, see. Let's say the normal gene is A and the mutated gene is small a. Okay. Now, in this equation, P is normal gene and Q is the abnormal gene. Okay, the mutated gene. Now, see, in this, we can put the values here. See, I mean, we can write it here small a small a capital a small a capital a small a this a a we can write it as a square or as we said capital a is p so we can write it as p square okay now small a small a we can write it as small a square or we can say q square okay and capital a small a capital a small a two times is two capital a small a or you can say two p q so p square q square and 2pq this is how you can also understand this equation now simply remember this what what is the meaning of p square what is 2pq and what is q square see p square is the frequency of homozygous normal people in the population it means it is the number of people or the chances of people those are normal okay who have both the gene normal okay that is p square okay both the normal genes now 2pq is the frequency of carrier okay or the chance of person being a carrier or the number of people in a population who are carrier that's what 2pq is carrier and q square is the frequency of diseased people or in other words you can say prevalence of the disease this is most important thing okay q square again q square is prevalence of disease okay see q square both mutated gene now we are considering in this case as uh, means for disease which are autosomal recessive and in exam most of the question will be dependent on autosomal recessive diseases so see q square is prevalence of disease okay autosomal recessive now if you know p square is for normal people 2pq is carriers and q square is disease people or prevalence of disease then we can move on see so let's try to under understand how to solve the questions using hardy weinberg equation now i'll show you a classic scenario which is given in every question bank okay and you can also expect the same on real exam so let's try to understand see uh, let's let's take a scenario in which it says that mrs x is married to mr y okay mrs x is married to mr y okay and both are healthy both are healthy okay now the vignette also mentions that mrs x was previously married to mr z okay and both of them had a child okay both of them had a child who was having cystic fibrosis let's say or you can take any other autosomal recessive disease so let's take cystic fibrosis the vignette mentions that mrs x and mr z were having a child who was suffering from cystic fibrosis the mr z is ex husband so see from this information okay the question will also mention that mr z is also healthy or was having disease but it doesn't matter see let's consider mr z as healthy now if you know that 
द चाइल्ड ऑफ मिसिस एक्स एंड मिस्टर जेड वॉज हैविंग सिस्टिक फाइब्रोसिस दैट इज एन ऑटोसोमल रिसेसिव डिजीज इट मीन्स दैट वन जीन सी द चाइल्ड विल हैव स्मॉल ए स्मॉल ए इट मीन्स द चाइल्ड रिसीव वन जीन फ्रॉम हर मदर एंड वन फ्रॉम हिज फादर ओके सो इट मीन्स दैट मिसिस एक्स वो इज हेल्दी इज अ कैरियर ओके शी इज हैविंग कैपिटल ए स्मॉल ए एंड शी पास स्मॉल ए टू हर चाइल्ड so from this information that uh, mr z and mrs x were having a child who was suffering from cystic fibrosis we can know that mrs x is a carrier okay she is a healthy carrier so this this is the first information that you will get now they will mention that mr y is born and brought up in new york okay he is born and brought up in new york and the prevalence of cystic fibrosis in new york is let's say 1 in 1 million okay see it will say that mr y was born and brought up in new york and the prevalence of disease in new york is 1 in 1 million okay now they have given the information that the mr y is healthy but they didn't mention that mr y uh, mr y is having both the gene normal or he is a carrier okay so if you find any question like this what you have to do is simply this thing see i will also also put five stars here see if it's not given that mr y has both the gene normal or he is a carrier then you always have to find the chances of mr y being a carrier we we always have to find that what are the chances that mr y is a carrier okay so how can we find that we can find it from this information see what they have given is that mr y lives in new york okay and he was born and brought up in new york now the prevalence of cystic fibrosis in new york is 1 in 1 million so we already said that prevalence of disease is always q square so see if q square is equal to 1 in 1 million okay then q will be 1 in 1000 okay now as we all know that p plus q is equal to 1 by 1000 okay then the value of p will be 1 minus 1 divided by 1000 now as this value is very small okay we can take that p is equivalent to 1 okay p is equivalent to 1 so now we are having value of q that is 1 in 1000 also we are having value of p that is 1 so from this we can find what are the chances that mr y is a carrier okay so what is the formula of carriers 2 pq so the chance that mr y is a carrier is 2 pq see 2 pq okay so 2 multiply by what what was the value of p it was 1 and what was the value of q it was 1 upon 1000 okay so the value of 2 pq will be 2 divided by 1000 that is 1 by 500 okay so the chances that mr y okay the chance is that mr y is a carrier is 1 by 500 and that's what you need to find if you find it then everything is very easy now see the chances of mrs x being a carrier is 1 because we already know that she is a carrier okay and the chances of mr y being a carrier is 1 by 500 okay now what are the chances that mrs x will pass a mutated gene okay it's always 1 by 2 okay and what are the chances that mr y will pass a mutated gene if he is a carrier it is again 1 by 2 now if you will multiply all these values that is 1 by 2 multiply by 1 by 500 multiply by 1 by 2 that is 1 divided by 2000 okay see this 1 divided by 2000 is the chances that the child of mrs x and mr y will have cystic fibrosis this is the chance of miss of child that of miss mrs x and mr y to be having cystic fibrosis and most of the time i can assure you almost 90% of time you will get this similar kind of scenario okay now let's try to see the exception or the less frequently asked question see okay this thing was explained to be uh, explained to me by one of my friend okay who was my study partner and this made uh, things very easy for me so let's try to understand see for autosomal recessive disease the prevalence of disease is always 
Q square. Okay, if they mention autosomal recessive disease, then prevalence of disease will will always always be Q square. If they mention autosomal dominant disease in the vignette, which will be very rare, then the prevalence of disease will be 2 PQ because there is nothing like carrier in autosomal dominant disease. Okay, if the person is having even one gene which is abnormal, let's say this one is abnormal, then he will surely have a disease and he will be a part of prevalence of disease. So for autosomal dominant diseases, the prevalence of disease will be 2 PQ. And for X link recessive diseases, if the person given is male, then the prevalence of the disease will be Q. Okay, it will not be Q square, it will be Q. And why is it Q? Because see, he is having, see, in male, even if there is one X which is abnormal, okay, then they will have the disease. That's why it is only Q. For female to have the disease, they need to have both the X to be abnormal, okay? Both the X to be abnormal. That's why the prevalence of disease in female means the prevalence of X link recessive disease in female is Q square, okay? So if you know the uh, formula for autosomal dominant diseases and X link recessive diseases, then it will be an extra added benefit and you can easily solve all the questions. So, if you have understood this thing, then let me show you a question and you can write the answer in the comment box. So, let's see the question. See, what is the question? If the prevalence of hereditary, okay, I think now it will be clear. Okay. See, if the prevalence of hereditary spherocytosis in population of New York is 1 by 5000, okay, then what is the prevalence of homozygous diseased people? in New York okay you have to write the answer in the comment box okay I have shown a hint here see if the value of P is not given then take the value of P as 1 okay so try to uh, find the answer and write it in the comment box so this was all about Hardy Weinberg equation okay I tried to simplify it okay if you remember this whole vignette okay which is frequently asked then I think you can solve most of the questions on step 1